Okay, I wanted to talk a bit about um, the bass drum. Uh, this has been probably the most difficult aspect of putting a drum kit together for this one-third scale. Uh, I did everything. Let's see, I, I used that old nest tea container, which didn't work. I found out it was actually too small. It was only about six inches or so. Um, I was going a little crazy trying to find something, anything that would work for the bass drum, um, including even purchasing a kid's drum on eBay, which uh, that turned out to be a whole separate disaster um, and is actually going back to the seller. Drums come in all different shapes out there, and for the bass drum, you really need something that's it's going to be straight from top to bottom, not um, angular. So, after perusing around Home Depot for about 45 minutes, looking in every single section they had, looking for something that could work uh, as a drum, I stopped into Hobby Lobby and actually found, at first I found some what looked like um, round hat uh, boxes, but then I came across this cardboard box at at, uh, at Hobby Lobby, and in order to get the right size, I had to get uh, it's basically a nine inches across uh, with the lid is probably about mm, I don't know nine and three quarters or a little under. The problem is to get the nine inch. Uh, circular box it actually came taller than I needed so the shorter one that they had which would have worked great was too short so this is going to be um, the bass drum and what I've done and I'm going to come over here now is show you uh, the drum that I've, I've pretty much put together it used to be, you know, that tall. So we had to take, you know, a huge chunk out of it, make it smaller, and keep in mind, of course, even if bass drums are wider, you're going to be um, working with a doll who's not as flexible as a person, and their knees are going to stick out a bit. So because it's for display purposes and you're not going to really see a whole lot of the bass drum, um, I'm figuring that this this size here probably about maybe four and a half inches uh, should work. And what I had to do is I had to take the lid and split the lid, uh, not in half again, um, because the lid was actually quite long. I had to remove a piece from the center. So I left the actual lid with a portion of the lip. Um, that's probably about a half inch. And then um, I had to cut a strip out, same size, and then attach it to the bottom. And all of this is going to be painted silver, so this will at least look like it's like a silver rim, which would help. Um, I also bought some little, some little legs for it that I'm going to try to um, adhere somehow. Um, it's going to be after the fact, though. I have to wait for this to dry first and then I'll apply the legs and then I'll paint everything. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm hoping this is gonna work. And again, um, this has been the biggest headache and if this does work, I will be ecstatic because I'll probably at that point have the drum set almost complete. I just have a, a few more things that I need to tweak on it and then um, I'll show you the final product. Back again. And uh, this time I want to go over the uh, cymbal stands. I was not happy with the previous ones that I made, which were basically out of um, dowel, you know, thin dowel rods. Um, so I had to get creative again and search the hardware stores. So I came up with, um, I came up with these. Uh, this is 
a round aluminum tube and uh, there's the sizing that I went with. Um, I got these at Ace Hardware because um, I couldn't find anything at Home Depot. And um, I, I had to buy probably about four of those uh, just, to be, just to be safe. And the reason I got that size is because it was the only size that went with these, which is a three-way um, butt splice. I know, nice name. Um, however, it was the only thing that I could find that would work as a joint for the simple stands. And I'm going to pull back here just to kind of show you where I'm at right now. Um, this is what I've kind of come up with. And the nice thing about the three-way um, butt splice is that it actually moves. There's like this little area here where you can actually turn these guys. Um, and so it created the correct shape. So I had to uh, cut with a Dremel the aluminum tubing so that I could get uh, the small part here and the longer part here. Uh, one of the tubes here is intact for the length. Then I had to glue these pieces here together. Um, the other challenge is going to be the bottom. Right now I have them just sitting in tonner stands, old tonner stands that um, I drilled out so that they fit. And then at the top, this is the funky part. Um, I have another one of the butt splices up here and I'm going to try to use that. This is, again, the tricky part if you can just kind of envision the symbol and it's going to go on top of here but I have to get it to fit right and then hopefully this little piece sticking up here will hold it in place. Um, I, I want to make sure that it doesn't just flop around and that's why I put a little duct tape up there um, but first I want to spray paint everything so it's all silver. Um, that's going to be my next step. Um, what I have on order are a couple of small tripod stands that I found on eBay. I'm just hoping that they fit the pole. Uh, I don't care if they're a little bit big. I could always make that work, but if they're too small, that means I'm probably going to have to do some drilling. That's always tricky. So uh, that's what I have now. I have two of them in the works. Um, they've both been glued. They should be pretty sturdy. Um, I just basically use... Uh, the Loctite Ultra Universal Adhesive. And I let them sit all night so that they're really, really dry and um, then, then they should work. So I'll be back once I get them sprayed. Hopefully those tripods will be arriving um, within the next day or two and then I can, uh, I can show you those as well. See you in a while.